Good morning everyone, welcome to part 1 of the lecture 3 under module 3. In this lecture, we will practice few example on the concept discussed in this module. So, if you recollect in this module, we discuss about the bias feedstock followed by the classification of the bias feedstock. In that, we discuss about the proximate analysis, ultimate analysis and structural and composition analysis of bias feedstock. Followed by that, we discuss about the thermochemical conversion processes. In that, we discuss about the physical processes and thermochemical conversion processes. However, we just learn two thermochemical conversion processes that is carbonization and torrefaction and remaining thermochemical conversion processes will be covered in the next module. So, based on the topic discussed in this module, we will practice few example in this lecture. So, here the first example which is on the ultimate analysis. So, a bamboo waste it contains around 8 percent moisture on as received basis and its composition is given as below that is the approximate composition it is given on dry basis that is the volatiles contained, fixed carbon contained and ash contained. Also the ultimate composition of this biobased feedstock material is given, but it is on dry and ash free basis which includes C, H, O, N and S. So, based on this given information, we need to calculate the ash content on as received basis. Similarly, we need to also estimate the ultimate composition on dry basis. For example, here the ultimate composition on dry and ash free basis is given. However, we need to estimate this ultimate composition on only dry basis. So, let us begin with the solution of this example. So, here first we need to calculate the ash content on as received basis. and it is also referred as AR basis. So, in this model we discuss some correlation which correlate the ash content on dry basis with ash content on dry ash free basis as well. So, we will take help of those correlation while solving this example and one such correlation if you remember is as mentioned here. So, if you recollect the our discussion, so this indicates the ash on dry basis and this represents the ash on as received basis and this m is the fraction of moisture in the given biomass. So, as we know here the moisture value is given in the example as 8 percent And the ash value on dry basis it is given here in the proximate analysis. Right. So, if you just do this small calculation, you will get the value in the form of 0 0.0196, and this is the ash content on as received basis that is equal to 1.96 percentage. So, this is the answer to this first term here that is ash content on as received basis. Similarly, now we need to estimate the ultimate composition on dry basis. 
So, if you remember this is the one concept we discussed in previous module as well as in the module 1. So, this particular chart indicates the ultimate and the proximate analysis and how this ultimate and the proximate analysis is represented in three different ways. So, this particular line indicates the dry and ash free basis. So, when we are calculating the ultimate analysis of any given feedstock on dry and ash free basis. So, it only accounts this composition because here we are not taking into account the ash and the moisture. If it is on dry basis, then it includes the ash in the composition and if it is on as received basis means there is no pre-processing is done with this particular feedstock. So, it includes the moisture also. So, based on that now we have to estimate we have to calculate the ultimate analysis on dry basis and ultimate analysis on dry ash free basis it can be represented in this way like C plus H plus N plus O plus S it should be equal to 100 percent composition because this is on the dry and ash free basis where the moisture and the ash is not taken into consideration and if you are representing the ultimate analysis on only dry basis then it includes C plus H plus N plus O plus S and ash on dry basis and that equals to 100. So, here since it is on dry basis, so it takes into account the ash content of the given material and ultimate analysis on dry ash free basis is given in this example where it is represented in the form C equal to 42.8 percent H 6.35 percent O 50.40 percent and N point 3 5 whereas S is 0.1 percent. So, with the help of these two equation and this given information we have to now estimate the ultimate analysis on dry basis. So, considering 100 gram of biomass on dry basis we can have ash content from proximate analysis as 2.13 which is given in the example as 2.13 percentage 
of 100 gram biomass sample. So, it is around 2.13 gram, right? So, now we know the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur on dry ash free basis is 100 minus 2.13 gram and it comes out to be around 97.87 gram here. So, this indicates the ultimate analysis on dry and ash free basis whereas, this particular value it indicates the ash contained when the ultimate analysis was estimated on the dry basis. So, it includes the ash of the specific material in the calculation of the ultimate analysis and that ash content on dry basis was found to be around 2.13 percent. But when it is dry and ash free basis, so this particular component that is ash is not considered in the ultimate analysis here. So, the total mass on dry basis if you see here it is 100 gram that is 97.87 gram which includes the composition of this component and the remaining that is ash is 2.13. So, if you take the summation of these two quantities here, so you will get the total mass on dry basis as 100 gram. So, now considering hundred gram of biomass at dry basis we can have ash content on dry basis as two point one three and carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and sulfur that is on dry ash free basis equal to 97.87 gram. So, as if you see here we are just using this information which is obtained from the previous step as well as the ash content on dry basis that is 2.13 gram. So, if you see now here the total mass on dry basis is this term plus this term if you take the summation of these two. So, we will get even the ultimate analysis on dry basis that is C H N O plus S plus ash on dry basis which is equal to the ultimate analysis on the dry basis and it will be equal to 100. So, now with this information now we have to estimate the ultimate analysis on dry basis. However, for that we know the element in the ultimate analysis that includes C H O n and then ash here on dry basis and finally, is the total amount. Now, once you see here the ultimate analysis on dry ash free basis is given as C is 42.80 percent, H is 6.35 percent, O 50.40 percent, N is 0.35 percent, 
पॉइंट वन परसेंट एंड हियर द एश इज जीरो परसेंट बिकॉज दिस इज ऑन द ड्राई एंड एश फ्री बेसिस सो एश इज नॉट अकाउंटेड इन द अल्टीमेट एनालिसिस हियर एंड इफ यू टेक द सम ऑफ दिस सो दिस टोटल परसेंटेज इज हंड्रेड परसेंट नाउ विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन एज वेल एज इन्फॉर्मेशन वी हैव जस्ट ऑप्टेन इन द प्रीवियस लाइट सो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट द एक्चुअल मास ऑन ड्राई बेसिस वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू सी हियर सो दिस पर्टिकुलर एंटायर टर्म इंडिकेट्स द अल्टीमेट एनालिसिस ऑन द dry and ash free basis and its total value is comes out to be around 97.87% but here the individual values of these terms are still unknown to us so we are just trying to find out the percentage of this component in ultimate analysis on dry basis because these values are known to us on dry and ash free basis but in terms of dry basis it is still unknown to us so we are just trying to find out this individual value on dry basis because here if you see this is actual mass on dry basis and this indicates the ultimate analysis on dry and ash free basis we know this value which is on dry and ash free basis similarly we know the total of this component which comes out to be around 100% so based on these two given information as well as the information which is available here we are just trying to estimate the actual mass on dry basis so it would be in this form 42.8% here which is on 100 gram basis however the actual mass which is available here is on dry basis 97.87 so if you just take the simple multiplication here so this final value will be 41.89 gram so this indicates the c contained in the ultimate analysis on dry basis would be around 41.89% because the total mass which is available here is on dry basis is 100 gram but when it is on dry and ash free basis it is around 97.87% and we know the value of this component on dry and ash free basis so based on this given data we are just converting these values into dry basis similarly once you convert this h here into again 97.87 it will be 6.21 gram and o will be 49.33 gram and this would be around 0.34 gram and the sulfur it would be roughly that is approx suppose and as here because this is calculation on the dry basis so here the quantity of ash as we already estimated on dry basis as 2.13 so these values is known to us so it is 2.13 gram so now if you take the summation of all these terms it will come out to be around 97.87 plus 2.13 ash on dry basis and roughly it would be 100 gram so i think this is clear now how to calculate this 
ultimate analysis or I would say the actual mass on dry basis. So, the ultimate composition on dry basis it would be 41.89 percentage here, 6.21 percent, 49.33 percent here 0.34 percent, 0 0.10 and here the ash would be 2.13 and this sum up to 100 percent. I hope now this is clear to all of you like how we have estimated this ultimate composition on dry basis when the ultimate analysis composition was known at dry and ash free basis. So, it can be done in the other way round also if the ultimate composition on the dry basis is given we can also estimate the ultimate analysis on dry and ash free basis. So, the second example here it is on the concept of net energy density of torrified biomass. If you recollect our discussion on the torrified biomass, there we discuss about the calculation of net energy density of given biomass. So, this example is exactly based on this concept to calculate net volumetric energy density of the torrified biomass pellets. If its bulk density is 800 kg per meter cube and the HHV value that is higher heating value at dry basis it can be calculated using the following model equation. So, we also discussed about this equation in the previous lecture which is used to calculate the higher heating value for range of the fuels where C, H, S, N and O also the ash are the mass percent of this component respectively in the torrified biomass at dry basis and their values are given here. So, with the help of this known data we need to just estimate the net volumetric energy density and to do that we need to calculate the higher heating value on dry basis. So, let us begin with the solution of this example. At first, we need to calculate the higher heating value dry basis using ultimate analysis data to determine higher rating value on dry basis this The equation is given here which is in megajoule per kg and the equation to calculate this higher rating value on dry basis is 0.3491 into C plus, plus 0 0.1005 into S minus 0 0.0151 into n minus 0 0.1034 into o and minus 0 0.0211 into ash content. So, as we know this 
component and their values. So, once we replace these values in this equation, so the higher heating value on dry basis would be 0.3491 into 48.9 plus 1.1783 into 5.1 plus 0 0.1005 into 0.1 then minus 0 0.0151 into 0.2 minus 0 0.1034 into 42.5 and minus 0 0.0211 into the ash content which is 3.2. So, after just doing this multiplication and summation as well as the subtraction, so we will get the final answer in the form of 18.63 megajoule per kg and this is the higher heating value on dry basis. Similarly, in this example, we need to calculate the net volumetric energy density of torrified biomass pellet. Now, we need to determine net volumetric energy density of the torrified biomass. So, to estimate this net volumetric energy density, we need to know the bulk density of torrified biomass. and it is given as 800 kg per meter cube and if you recollect in one of the lecture in this module we discuss about the expression to calculate the net volumetric energy density if the higher heating value and the bulk density is known. So, we will take the help of this equation here to estimate the net volumetric energy density because the higher heating value of the sample is already estimated in this example and the bulk density is given. So, with the help of these two values, we can estimate the net volumetric energy density and the high rating value obtained was 18.63 megajoule per kg and the bulk density is given as 800 kg per meter cube. So, once these two terms cancel out and after multiplication of these two quantities here, the final answer comes out to be around 14904 mega joule per meter cube and this is the net volumetric energy density of torrified pellet. Because if you remember this value is in terms of volume that is on meter cube basis right and the earlier value that is HHV it was mega joule per kg and we just estimated this value in the form of net volumetric energy density using the help of this equation. I hope with this now it is clear how to estimate the net volumetric energy density of a given biobased feedstock. It may be a biobased feedstock 
it may be a torrefied biomass or it may be a torrefied pellet whatever the feedstock and its composition which is available based on that we can estimate the higher heating value for the specific feedstock and if the bulk density value is known then we can estimate the volumetric energy density easily. With this we will end our lecture here and in the next lecture we will practice few more examples on the remaining concept discussed in this module. Thank you. Thank you.